Hey guys, good day, and thank you for coming back to the next video. Guys, one thing that's always plagued me is Peter. Um, Peter was one of the disciples, obviously. Uh, he's the one that denied Peter, uh, denied Jesus three times. And there's a story in Matthew 16 that has always, it's always been something that's hard to understand, but um, I know you guys are aware of this. So uh, Jesus is sitting with his disciples, and Jesus asks, he says, who do the people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But he said, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who was in heaven. So obviously right here, Peter Peter provides an answer. And Jesus Jesus says, hey, look, you didn't figure that out on your own. The Father spoke, and spoke that to you. And that's gave you the information. That gave you the ability to speak that truth. But then a few minutes later, I would assume it's a few minutes later, the tables get turned and Peter really puts his foot in his mouth. And I have a document here I'd like to review about this. So, um, <clears throat> what allowed Satan to speak through the mouth of Peter? So in Matthew 16, just after Peter was at a high point on his response about who Jesus was, Peter made a huge error in his thinking when he knew better than Jesus concerning his upcoming crucifixion. Jesus firmly rebuked Peter for his prideful and downright ignorant statement. Peter actually thought he knew better than Jesus. We can look back at this and learn a lesson, but the question is, what is the lesson? What was the root cause for Satan being given permission to speak through the mouth of Peter? Let's look at the text one more time. So, um, Matthew 16, verse 21. From that time, Jesus, be Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and to be killed, to be murdered, crucified. And on the third day, he would be raised. So Jesus was constantly reminding his disciples. He was teaching him about this event that would occur in Jerusalem. And Peter took him aside, took Jesus aside, and began to rebuke him. Can you imagine the gall of Peter pulling Jesus aside and rebuking him? And Peter says, Far be it for you, far be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. But Jesus turned, <clears throat> turned aside and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Now, I, I find this hard to think that in one instance, Peter goes from that high where he heard the Father speak to him, and then right away he turns the tables and does the exact opposite. Jesus has to say to him, Get behind me, Satan, as if Satan is speaking through Peter, where just a minute earlier, Peter was um, speaking what the Lord had showed him. I mean, the lesson here is how quickly, how quickly the tables can, turn, uh, can change and you can say the most uh, perfect, uh, godly thing, then turn around and literally speak for Satan. So what is the root cause? So what I did here to illustrate this issue, um, I provided a what if scenario for Matthew 16. So the green text, the yellow text is what really happened 2,000 years ago. The green text is my version of what could have happened if Peter was a little bit different. So let me go ahead and read it. So the green text, verse 22 down to verse 23, is my version of how it could have gone if Peter would have been a little bit different. So let me read it. So from, <clears throat> from that time... From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things, and the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and that he would be killed. And on the third day, he would be raised. In verse 22, my version, And Peter took him aside and began to question Jesus and say, Master, this is a hard saying for us to hear. However, is this what was meant by the words of John the baptizer when he said, You were the Lamb of God? Is this the fulfillment of what the prophet Isaiah wrote concerning the Lamb when he prophesied this years ago, actually 750 years ago? And Peter quoted Isaiah. He said, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, 
Yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. And Peter quoted Isaiah 57, 53, verse 7. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, You have done well to know the, to know and study the prophets. So many of my disciples show their foolishness by being slow to believe all that the prophets have written. For you have set your mind on the things of God and not followed after the folly of man. Okay, so what, what's different here between the yellow text and the green text? Let me see my conclusion here. So my conclusion is, is, is this. We can see that Peter's prideful and ignorant response to Jesus was the result of his refusal to rightly handle the word of truth. That's what uh, Paul wrote to Timothy, causing him not to know or to believe all that the prophets have written. That's what Jesus said in Luke 24, 25 to his disciples on the road to Emmaus. If Peter would have made the study of prophecy a priority in his walk with the Lord, he would have not allowed Satan to speak through him. Knowledge comes from the word of God, and anyone who refuses to study the whole canon of scripture is choosing to be ignorant of God's will. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Hosea 4 gives us some insight into this about those who want to be priests or religious leaders. Hosea 4 says, For with you is my contention, O priest, O religious leader. You shall stumble by day, and the prophet shall stumble with you by night, and I will destroy your mother. Okay. Now this mother, I would say, refers to the religious tradition where you come from. Okay, <clears throat> verse six, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because you, religious leader, have rejected knowledge. I will reject you from being a priest for me. So what we see here is that those who want to be the religious leaders who fail, who fail to go and go to the Lord for wisdom and knowledge, the Lord himself complains that his own people are destroyed because of their lack of knowledge, because the religious leaders have rejected knowledge. And therefore, these leaders themselves will be rejected by the Lord, according to Hosea. In Proverbs 29, we learn, it says this, it says, Where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off the restraint, or they run wild without leadership or guidance. Now, there's a study I want to show you guys that's from Luke about the road to Emmaus. And let me go ahead. I've showed this a few times. So here is, this is the day that Jesus rose from the dead. I have a picture here. And the title of this short study is, The Road to Emmaus Will Be Traveled Again by the Foolish Disciples Who Are Slow to Believe All That the Prophets Have Written. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with this story. Jesus comes upon these two disciples. They weren't part of the Twelve. And uh, he explains to them, um, first he asks them a few questions. And they're a little bit uh, mystified that he doesn't know Jesus is playing dumb about what happened in Jerusalem that day. And then once Jesus starts to explain to them prophecy and explain to them why the Son of Man had to be crucified, Jesus said this to them. He says, he says, Oh, you foolish ones, and slow to heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. So it wasn't until Jesus reviewed with them and studied the prophecy about his uh, about his crucifixion, Isaiah 53, Psalm 22, uh, and to understand God's plan in advance, then they realized and their eyes were opened. And it says in Luke chapter, in, in verse 31, and their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he explained prophecy to us? while he opened up the scriptures to us. So at the time in Jerusalem, when he first came, you know, all of the, the, the people that were following Jesus were blown away when they realized that their Savior, who had healed, uh, brought Lazarus back from the dead, did so many healings, miracles, fed the 5,000. They were just so confused after, the, after Palm Sunday when they all raved, uh, wave those palm branches to him and called him, you know, Messiah, Messiah, uh, son of David, have mercy on us. They were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, have mercy on us. They were confused when they saw him hanging dead on a cross and their faith was shaken because they didn't realize that that was actually prophesied from the beginning. In the same way, the modern Christian church 
is going to have their faith shaken to the core when they realize that the Lord has a plan, Isaiah 50, and that plan is that surely the little ones of the flock shall be torn away and those will be left desolate. At the sound of the capture of Babylon, the earth shall tremble. Psalm 82 speaks about the same thing, rescue. And that word in the Hebrew means snatch away. It's basically the Hebrew version of a rapture. The weak and the needy, the innocents and the bride. They have no, for they have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Same reference in Jeremiah 50. Micah chapter 1. Shave your heads in sorrow, for the children you love will be snatched away. Make yourselves as bald as an eagle, for your little ones have been removed from you. That's the Young's literal translation. So I've done many, many videos about the little ones being taken at the beginning of events, and it's gonna rock, it's gonna rock the church that has failed to believe all that the prophets have written. And I'm sure that if Peter would have taken this time to study prophecy, he literally would not have made a fool out of himself, and he would not have, have allowed Satan to speak from him. So a lack of knowledge from God's word can cause Satan to confuse you. With that, guys, I'll let you go. Have a great day, and God bless you.